to the Nile. The common theme occurred into syllabus nature. Nature. Now in this poem, uh, we are going to discuss um, some element of nature that is the Nile, the longest river believed to be the longest river of the world, the Nile. Now in this poem, John Cage, a poet, Cage, uh, discusses the Nile, its beauty, its power, natural beauty, natural power, cultural aspects, cultural aspects, uh, according to the Africans. The Nile is situated in Africa. You know, Africa is a large continent and this uh, most part of Africa is a desert, a barren land, but people live there still. This Nile is the life source. This Nile is the one who gives uh, life to these Africans. Therefore, Africans worship this Nile, worship. It's a holy river, sacred river. But for John Keats, the Nile is not a sacred river. The Nile is only another beautiful river of nature. Beautiful river of nature. John Keats rejects all cultural associations, belief, myths uh, related to Nile. Related to Nile. Right. Now this poem has 14 lines. This poem has 14 lines. What is the name you can give for such a poem? What is the name you can give uh, to such a poem? Fourteen lines. Right? Ah. Can you give a special name to a poem like this? I already taught you. If a poem has 14 lines, it has a name. Hmm. A poem with 14 lines has a name. What is that name? Hmm. Now you do not remember hmm. what I have taught you in previous lessons. Very sorry. Hmm. Can you remember the poem to the evening star? Hmm. In that discussion, I gave you that name. Yes. Now this poem has 14 lines. If you count them. Hmm. Right? One. Right? This is second. Third, fourth, 
fifth, sixth, seventh, right, eighth, ninth, ten, right. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, exactly fourteen lines. What is the name? Yes, Chamodya, what is the name? Hmm. Get me. Nuvi, Kavindu, Pasindu, what is the name I gave you? Ah, a poem with 14 lines. Very good, Nuvi. Sonnet, what is the name we ah, gave? Sonnet. Sonnet. If a poem has 14 lines, we call it a sonnet. Right. The other sonnet is to the evening star. It also has 14 lines. Ah. Then, therefore, this poem is a sonnet. Remember that name. Write it down by the side of your poem. A sonnet. Sonnets are written about certain objects or people. Uh, sonnets are composed. Compost means simply written to written to right admire about or admire beauty. Value, beauty, value, beauty, value, and greatness of An object or a person. Right. Sonnet. Sonnets are written or composed to admire beauty, value, and greatness of an object or a person, right? Sonnets. Now, the object in the sonnet is the Nile. The object of the sonnet is the Nile. Kids write this to admire beauty, value, greatness, of the Nile, but in a critical way, critical way, right. This sonnet is very special. Why we call it, not it down, a Petrarchan sonnet. Petrarchan sonnet. 
petrachan sonnet. Why do we call it a petrachan sonnet? Note it down. Petrachan sonnet. Francisco Petrarch. Francis Francisco Petrarch uh, was an Italian poet. Uh, it is this Petrarch who invented the sonnet tradition. Francisco Petrarch is the inventor of is the inventor of is the first to create of the sonnet tradition. Right? He is the creator. He is the first person, uh, inventor uh, of the sonnet tradition. Petrarch is an Italian poet, a thinker, a philosopher. He is a scholar, educated person. Uh, he invented the sonnet tradition in Italy. Later it uh, came into England. Mm. Blake, oh, sorry, it also uses this Petrarchan sonnet. Therefore, we call this a Petrarchan sonnet. What sonnet? A Petrarchan sonnet. Right. Petrachan sonnet. Not this down. Try this down by the side of your poem. Petrachan sonnet. Right. Why do we call it a Petrachan sonnet? Because it has some uh, special Features. It has some special features. What are the special features? Look at these eight lines. Ah. We call these eight lines octave. Octa means eight. What do you call it? Octave. Right? Ah, you can write it. Uh, like this. Octave. This part is octave. Octave. Right? Ah, because there are eight lines. Octave. Oct 
सकते हो ऑक्टेव ऑक्टेव इंट्रोड्यूसर्स ऑक्टेव इंट्रोड्यूसर्स राइट डाउन और इंक्लूड्स मैंने कह दिया ऑक्टेव इंक्लूड्स द प्रॉब्लम राइट और क्वेश्चन Now you see there is a question mark at the eighth line, right? At the eighth line. Now these remaining six lines, they are called. The remaining six lines are called cystic. Cystic. cystic cystic includes cystic includes the answer to the problem answer to the problem in the octave right ah uh, it is because of these reasons these reasons we call this we call this sonnet a uh, petrarchan sonnet because of the two parts octave cystic now this is the octave first eight lines octave includes the poet's problem doubtful feelings his suspicions about this object the nile and this the six lines describes gives offers the answer solution to the poet's uh, suspicious feelings or problem of the of the octave right therefore we call this a petrarchan sonnet because of this structure hmm. now you know why we call it petrarchan sonnet please understand this ah. without this knowledge basic knowledge foundation knowledge you cannot discuss or realize understand the idea of the poem <clears throat> right now you know the structure it's a technique literary device 
It's a literary device. What is the writing technique? Petrarchan sonnet structure. Petrarchan sonnet structure. Right. Petrarchan sonnet structure. Uh -huh. Now let's go to the sonnet. Now this is the title to the Nile. The poet is speaking to the Nile, thinking it to be before him. He imagines that the Nile is before him. Right? He imagines the Nile is before him. He thinks that the Nile is before him. Uh, he is speaking to the Nile. Right. Octave. The poet's problem. The poet's suspicious feelings about the Nile are expressed here. Son of the old moon mountain Africans. Ah. Son of the old moon mountains Africans. Now African people believe the Nile is the sun. The Nile is personified as a sun. Whose sun? Who are the parents of the Nile? The old moon mountains. The all moon mountains. Moon mountain means high mountains. Close to heaven. Close to sky. Then there is some implied meaning. Connotative meaning. That the Nile uh, originates. The origin of the Nile. Or the birth of the Nile. Is... High mountains, heavenly mountains. Even the mountains are personified as parents. It's a technique. You see, the very first line, in the very first line, the Nile is personified as a son of the parents all moon mountains, heavenly parents. Therefore, it is implied that Nile is a heavenly river, holy river, because his parents are heavenly. This is Africans' belief. All Africans believe so. The Nile comes down to the earth from heaven, given by God some other power. Africans believe. The second line of the octave, chief of the pyramid and crocodile. Ah. Now the Nile is believed to be a great leader, powerful leader. Chief, chief means leader, tribal leader, chief. Now, Africa uh, consists of tribal people, tribes. Those tribes have a chief, ruler. Now, people believe the Nile is the ruler of this area. The Nile rules, controls the pyramid. Pyramid means, you know, great pyramids built by Egyptians. Pyramid is very huge. They are mammoth constructions. Now, Nile is the creator. Nile is the chief of these huge pyramids. Therefore, the Nile has, what is implied here, the Nile has a great power, a power to control the whole pyramid and the crocodile. Crocodile is also a ferocious animal, water animal, water creature. 
Uh, the Nile is the chief of these animals too. Now this is Nile's leadership. This is Nile's power in Africa, even in Egypt. Now pyramid means Egypt because this Nile River flows through many countries. Uh, in Egypt, it goes into the sea. Uh, therefore, the Nile is the ruler of the whole African continent. Ruler. Chief. That is the idea of Africans, black people. Even people say, we call thee fruitful. Fruitful means very resourceful. We call you very resourceful. Hmm? People say, the Nile is a good river. The Nile has so many riches, so many resources. It's a resourceful, hmm, useful, uh, supportive, helpful river. People say, people believe, Africans believe, but very while, at the same moment, there is some other thing against this common view. What is it? A desert. There is a barren land, empty land, filling our seeing's inward spans. Seeing's inward spans means simply our eyes. Now, as far as our eyes can see, there is a desert land. But people say the Nile is a resourceful, fruitful river. How can this be possible? The poet question thinks. People say the Nile is fruitful, resourceful, but there is a barren, empty, desert land. This is really a paradox. This is the paradoxical nature of Nile. Paradox. P-A-R-A-D-O-X. Paradox means something contradictory, not matching. Hmm? Words do not match the idea. Right? Now, the Nile is a resourceful river, but there is a desert. The words does not match the situation or given picture. Right? Nurse of the sort nations. Uh, nurse of the sort nations is a metaphor uh, used for the Nile. Nurse means protector. Sort nations means those hard-working black people, Africans. Sort nations. Uh, Nile is also believed to be the protector, caretaker of all Africans, short nations, since the world began, beginning of the world. That is the common picture of the Nile. The Nile is a holy sun. The Nile is a chief. The Nile is a resourceful river, fruitful river. And the Nile is the protector of Africans. People believe so. Then the poet has this question, Art thou so fruitful? Are you so fruitful? Thou means you, you know those words now. Are you so resourceful? This is poet's problem. Now people say Nile is such and such a river. But in practical situations, it cannot be seen. In practical situations, it cannot be seen. Or dost thou beguile? Or do you cheat? Beguile means cheat. 
deceive, mislead, M-I-S-L-E-A-D. Or do you mislead such men? Such men means those Africans. Do you mislead such Africans to honor thee, to respect you? Ah, the poet has a problem or question. What is it? The Nile is a cheater. Not honest. The Nile is a cheat in character. He cheats, mislead people who worn with toil, people who are tired. Toil means hardships, difficulties. Actually, Africans, life in Africa is not so uh, comfortable. Life in Africa is very difficult, full of hardships, full of hardships. Toil, toil means hardship, difficulties. Kids questions, the Nile may be a cheater who misleads the hard-working Africans. Oh, sometimes mm, uh, such men to honor thee who worn with toil Rest for a space, live in between. A space means live in a land, space means some area, land, region. Twixt, twixt means between. Twixt Cairo and Deccan. Twixt Cairo, Cairo is a city in Egypt. Deccan is another city in Africa. Now, between those it be, between these two cities, the Nile flows or travels. The poet questions: The Nile is a cheater. The Nile cheats the people between Cairo and Dakar. That is his suspicious feeling. That is the poet's doubt or suspicion. Is this Nile an honest person? Is it so fruitful? Uh, does it have leadership, power? Is it a holy river? He questions in the octave. That is the idea of the octave. Right? That is the idea of the octave. Right. Now, let's go to uh, Sestet. Six lines. What does it say? Now, octave, the idea of the octave is clear. Then in the sestet, the poet presents his answer, solution, or explanation for the problem in the, in the octave. What is his explanation? Okay, go to line 9. Oh, may dark fancies, dark fancies, Dark fancies is a metaphor. What is dark fancies? Mythical beliefs. Mythical. M-Y-T-H-I-C-L. Mythical. Superstitious belief. S-U-P-E-R-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. S-U-P-E-R-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. Superstitious belief, dark fancies. Now, they are not scientific, not logical. Dark fancies means unscientific, 
illogical uh, belief mm, ideas now poet says africans have these dark fences a uh, a uh means mislead cheat a uh. Uh, means mislead. Uh, the poet says, dark fancies, mythical belief, mythical belief, cheats, or mislead the night mm, Africans. Right. Then line nine again. They surely do. They surely do. Hmm. They surely do. Now, poet finally says, these dark fences or mythical belief is the one reason, is the one reason for the Africans to believe that Nile is a fruitful river. The Nile is a fruitful river. Go to next line. It is ignorance. Another reason. Ignorance. This means it is. Ignorance means ignorance means no education. No knowledge. You understand? No education and knowledge. No wisdom. No intelligence. Right. Now, poet says, these Africans are not educated. They have no knowledge. They have no science. Uh, therefore, this lack of knowledge, education makes, underline, a barren waste. A barren waste is also another metaphor. What is the idea? Uh, a person without an empty person. Empty person. Hmm. Foolish person. Foolish. A stupid person. Of all beyond itself. All beyond itself means without any limits. Mm. There is no limit. Therefore, knowledge, mm. education, is a must. If you do not have knowledge and education, you become an ignorant person. Hmm? Unbelievably, beyond limitations, limits, you become a foolish person. Right. Now, that is the other reason. One reason is dark fences. The other reason is ignorance. Now, poet explains. Thou dost bid you. Bid you means give water. What is the idea of bid you? Give water. You give water. Bid you. All other rivers give water. The poet generalizes the rivers of the world. 
All rivers have water. Uh, they give water to the people and animal. Then what is the difference between you and the other rivers? You have green rushes. Rushes means a tall, uh, slim, thin, aquatic grass. Rush means a type of grass. Uh, river grasses. Very tall. You also have these rushes like our rivers. Even our rivers, even our rivers, all rivers have rushes. You also have rushes. Then you are not so special. You also have the same qualities as other rivers do. Mm. And does taste, enjoy. Taste means enjoy. You enjoy the pleasant sun, sunrise. All other rivers enjoy the same sun like you. You don't have a different sun. You are not so special. Hmm? Green Isles. You also have green islands, small islands. Isles means other rivers also have small islands. Then what is the difference between you and the other rivers? No, nothing. No difference. Has thou too? Have you too? You too have. You too have. Green islands, other rivers also have green islands. And finally, final destination, what is it? Final destination is to the sea. All rivers in their journey, they are traveling, they are flow in the sea. As happily does taste. It means travel or flow. Uh, all rivers end their journeys in the sea. You do the same thing. Right. Now in this state, the poet uh, explains or answers the question raised in the octave. Raised in the octave. Now that is why we call this a Petrarchan sonnet. Petrarchan sonnet. Now you can see uh, the logical order of the poet presentation in the octave. The poet presents the problem in the cystic, he has the answer. He has the answer. Huh? He does not really accept the Nile's uh, character, as the Africans say, but he is very critical and analytical about the Nile. Now this Petrarchan sonnet, all Petrarchan sonnets have a specific rhyming scheme. Rhyming scheme. Or rhyming pattern. Rhyming pattern. Can anyone of you Find out a rhyming pattern for this. Hmm? The octave has one pattern. The sestet has another pattern. I have taught you how to find out rhyming patterns. Okay, I'll give you 
few seconds, few minutes or uh, some time to find out the rhyming pattern of this sonnet, Petrarch and sonnet. Try it. Try it to find out the rhyming pattern. Send me the answer. Okay. No answer came. It means uh, you have no understanding about rhyming pattern. African A, Crocodile B, Wild B, Span A, Began A, Beguile B, Tile B, Decan A. Now what is the rhyming pattern of octave A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. That is the rhyming pattern of octave. Then rhyming pattern of sestet C, do C, waste D, bidu again C, U sound, do, bidu, U, taste D, do again C, taste again D. Right? D. Ah. Then what is the rhyming pattern of say state? C D C D C D. Right. Now that is the Petrarchan rhyming pattern. Petrarchan rhyming pattern. Okay. Now, because of these qualities, we call this a Petrarchan sonnet. Right. That is the main discussion. Uh, let's write down our comment. The poet. The poet. John Keats, John Keats was an English poet, was an English poet English poet. He wrote many poems. He wrote many poems. On the subject of nature. They write down. The subject matter of the poem. Next topic. The subject matter of the poem. The sonnet. The sonnet. Is an address. The sonnet is an address 
to the longest river is an address to the longest river of the world. Longest river of the world. The African people The African people believe believe that the Nile is a sacred river Sacred River giving life giving life to the Africans and Egyptians. to the Africans and Egyptians. However, however, the poet rejects. However, the poet rejects all mythical belief, all, a double L, all mythical, M-Y-T-H-I-C-L, all mythical belief associated with and given upon the Nile and given upon the Nile given upon the Nile He comments that the Nile is not so special from other rivers of the world. And it has only a natural beauty. It has only a natural beauty and nothing else. and nothing else. Right. Then comment.
the poem the poem to the nile the poem to the nile is a sonnet a sonnet addressed a double d r e double s e d addressed addressed to the longest river of the world the longest river of the world full stop the structure s t r u c t u r e the structure of the sonnet is petrarchan the structure of the sonnet is petrarchan petrarchan a petrarchan sonnet next sentence a petrarchan sonnet a petrarchan sonnet has some distinctive d i s t i n c t i v distinctive features of it on of it on full stop all petrarchan sonnets all petrarchan sonnets are divided are divided into two section into two section s e c t i o n section the first eight lines next sentence the first eight lines are called the first eight lines are called the first eight lines are called <clears throat> are called the octave are called the octave
and the remaining <clears throat> the remaining six lines the remaining six lines are called are called cystic are called cystic Full stop. In the octave, in the octave, in the octave, the problem. The problem raised R A I S C D raised by the poet includes. includes an in in the cystic in the cystic The solution, for the problem, is given. The solution for the problem is given. Next paragraph. A Petrarchan sonnet. A Petrarchan sonnet. Also has a Specific Specific Rhyming R H Y M I N G Rhyming Pattern Rhyming Pattern the specific rhyming pattern rhyming pattern in the octave 
the rhyming pattern is in the octave the rhyming pattern is a b b a a b b a in the octave the rhyming pattern is a b b a a b b a And in the sestet, and in the sestet, it is In the sestet, it is C D C D C D. In the sestet, it is C D C D C D. C D C D C D. Right. Now that is about uh, the Petrarchan uh, sonnet tradition. In the next class, we'll discuss uh, the idea of the octave and also the idea of the sestet uh, in a critical, analytical way in a critical analytical way.